What's going on trading card game players? Figs here with Figs Forum bringing you guys my branded Despia deck profile. So I wanted to go ahead and showcase for you guys the branded Despia list that I took to my local OTS. I was able to make top eight. Unfortunately, I just fell short of getting my invite, uh, but it was very a very successful day in my opinion. I haven't really been playing Yu-Gi-Oh much, especially in my local scene. Uh, I still follow it online and things like that, but unfortunately I haven't really been putting in a lot of work uh, in regards to the game at the moment as I've been waiting for a new format and a new set. Um, but yeah, I was still able to actually, you know, be pretty successful in getting top eight. Uh, you know, I played against all meta decks as well. Um, my round one was like Noble Knights. I played against Rescue Ace, Unchained, Purely, Cash. Uh, those are all the decks that I played against. So I did play against, you know, pretty meta relevant decks. It was just a matter of uh, basically just, you know, kind of, um, you know, remembering how to basically, you know, deal with those matchups and, you know, having the appropriate side and main deck cards in order to deal with a lot of those matchups. Unfortunately, in top eight, I lost a die roll. And then game two, I actually made a mistake and forgot that the field card uh, stopped me from being able to target the special summon purely monster. So that ended up costing me the match. Um, I ended up using trying to use uh, Drago's Apelli on one of the monsters that was unaffected. Uh, I forgot that he had special summon that monster because um, he had normal summon one of them that turn. But yeah, so it ended up costing me the game. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I had fun with this list. I definitely went back to more of a generic list. It's definitely not as gimmicky. I don't want to say as gimmicky, but it's definitely not as... Um, you know, resourceful as the other lists that I do post, I wanted to steer away from playing a dear servant just because of the fact that a lot of decks right now in the format do utilize the extra deck and sending cards to the graveyard. So I didn't want to give my opponents too much advantage. And I think that was one of the issues that I had at the regional, the last, which was actually the last time I actually played the game. Um, you know, I ended up playing against two lab and lost the both because, you know, turn one, I got ashed and then I went ahead and used the dear servant. Went into Maximus, uh, sent Gar sent I sent Garua, or I sent um, Garua off, obviously off of the Dear Servant, and then sent two other names, but they sent Garua. Um, so basically allowing them to be able to start off with a six card hand, uh, which can be pretty good, especially when they're playing furniture and things like that. So yeah, it definitely was, um, uh, in my opinion, was definitely a mistake in terms of the meta. Um, but yeah, I wanted to avoid making that same mistake. So I did go back to a more generic list, utilizing the Bestials, Brandon Loss, and things like that. And I think it was okay. Um, there was a, a couple of changes that I would make or that I felt as though I should have kept from previous lists. So we'll definitely go over that. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into the deck profile. I can showcase you guys my formula or my take on the deck and what I brought to the OTS. We'll go over main deck, extra deck, and side deck. That way you guys can see um, exactly what my thought process was and my choice for a lot of these cards. Um, I don't think the list will change too much going into the next format, especially with Cash Band. I think a lot of the cards that are being utilized in a deck right now are still very strong. But it all depends on how the format shapes up. I do believe that tier elements are actually going to make a comeback because the deck um, does still heavily rely on RNG, but obviously having access to the graveyard now, uh, you know, reliable access to the graveyard actually makes a huge difference. So, uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. I'll showcase for you guys the uh, deck list or my formula. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I believe the main deck was actually 42. I wasn't able to get it down to 40. Um, I wanted to make sure that I utilized as many cards as I could to keep the deck consistent. Um, so it was either 40 or 42. But um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. So we'll start off with the Despia cards. We've got three Alibur, uh, one Adlib, one Quem, and one Tragedy. Uh, this was my one of my mistakes. I went down to one Quem, and it actually made a huge difference. There was actually multiple instances where actually having access to two Quem would have made game states a lot more simplified and easier to deal with. Um, because a lot of times, Quem was obviously a main target. And nobody wants to leave Quem on the board. So having Titanic Clad in the extra deck and being able to summon the second one actually makes for a huge difference in the in almost every match. Um, you know, because again, she's like 80% of your recursion. She just does so much during your turn and your opponent's turn. So um, I think having access to two, again, was a mistake. I took one out because I wanted to make room for the Bishio stuff, um, for Sornir, Lubellion, and Lost. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely regret cutting this down to one. But that was what I played for the Despias. And then we have three Fallen Albaz, obviously very standard. Uh, two Cartesia, uh, one Recarrier, one Kit, and one Shrouded Dragon. So uh, this is obviously very standard. Not really much to say about this. Cartesia, you know, flexes finds a, a flex spot between two and three, but I think two is pretty standard. Um, then we have the two Bistials, uh, Bistu, Lubellion, and Sornir. So the reason why I went back to this is because there are actually a, quite a few decks. Well, there's at least two decks I know of that can Nibley lock you. Um, and Rescue Ace is uh, semi-popular, so I didn't want to sit down in my game ones and just completely get obliterated by Ibley. I wanted to make sure that I at least had a main deck out 
which allowed me to be able to at least tribute summon over it. So being able to at least see one of two of these, um, you know, kind of allows you to be able to find a way to, you know, get the Ibley off the board in your game ones because they do use beat cop to make it unprotected. So you're, you're going to have a hard time crashing it. And then more, nine times out of 10, if you pass on it, they're just going to end up killing you with access code. So yeah, I definitely felt like this was just necessary in terms of being able to have the additional option to deal with stuff. Plus with the popularity of D-Link um, and other decks, it's nice to at least have access to a Bishio uh, because it gives you a slight bit of interruption. And then of course the access to branded lost. Uh, so we'll go over the branded cards, uh, three branded fusion standard, uh, three opening. So I went with one white, uh, one red, one lost and one retribution. So the reason why I'm still playing white is because of the accessibility to fusion monsters. So one of the, obviously the downfalls of this deck is Ash Blossom. A lot of times if you get Ash Blossom, you're still not going to be able to resolve branded fusion. Um, or another way to fuse outside of Cartesia. So I wanted to have an additional way of being able to still play the game on my turn if I did get ashed. So playing into a board, if I already had seen a board breaker or didn't need one, Thrust was able to search me branded in white, which allowed me to continue to play. Uh, it actually came in clutch every single time I seen this card. The only time it doesn't, it's not great, obviously, is going first. But there are lines that do allow you to actually set up a pretty good board especially with Brandon and White, uh, especially for this format, because Unchained, Rin Brum, and Mirror Jade are actually pretty nuts. So Brandon and White does actually set you up with that kind of line where you're able to actually make Rin Brum and Mirror Jane. Um, but yeah, I felt like this is something that I can see, continuing to see play in the future. Because again, you know, we want to have accessibility to being able to summon things, uh, you know, during our turn. And as soon as this gets Ash Blossom, if we're not playing Cross Out, our only options are Cartesia and Brandon and White. So I wanted to make sure that I utilize as many options as I could to be able to play the game during my turn. I know Fallen Elbaz is an option, but unfortunately, no one's going to allow you to sit there and activate Fallen Elbaz. Uh, you know, they're, they're saving the Imperms or whatever for it. But yeah, I did like Brandon and White a lot. It, it put in a lot of work. Again, the only time I didn't like it is when I bricked on it one game um, and it didn't even cost me the match. My opponent played it in a nib and um, ended up actually getting us a draw. Um, so three fusion deployment are other fusion cards. Um, obviously, nothing to say about that. So we'll go into our, our, our package here for Triple Tactics Thrust. So I play three Thrust, uh, one Harpies, one Herald, one Talent, and one Fusion Duplication. Um, so the reason why I'm still main decking the Herald, obviously, is for Purely. I wanted to have a, a main board option for the deck because I didn't want to just go into the deck and not have the ability to clear Noir. Uh, it's a very difficult card to clear, and a lot of times, if you don't have something in the main board to deal with it, and they do have the ability to put the spell underneath it that gives it a boost, you actually can't out it. So you're left basically just allowing your opponent to sit on it for a little while. I know a lot of times with the trap, when they make it, they're able to pretty much just cycle. It gets cycled back into the uh, into the extra deck. But a lot of times they're just going to attack with it and make Zeus. So it is hard for you to be able to just like ignore it most of the time. You do want to try to play the game. And I felt like having access to Herald meant that I was going to be able to, um, you know, have an out to a game one. Um, but yeah, a Harpy's Feather Duster actually was insane uh, against Cash. Thrust just blew out my matchups for cash. I mean, I had no issues against cash. As soon as I seen Thrust, it was like, <laughs> it just gave me all the outs that I needed to pretty much play into it. Uh, there was one uh, one player where my opponent had uh, double Fenrir and Unicorn on board, one in rest, or one in defense and one in uh, attack mode. He summoned one in attack mode off of Shangri. Um, so I wanted to try to uh, get him to actually, um, you know, activate an effect during my turn so I can Thrust into Talents. So I ended up doing uh, Mirror Jade off of his Shangri, and then he didn't respond. I ended up doing Branded Fusion. I made Borload uh, Dragon, and then he responded with Fenrir and Unicorn. So then I went ahead and I used Talents. I took his other Unicorn, or his other Fenrir that was in defense, took control of it, uh, swung into his Fenrir, and banished his Unicorn. So this card just single-handedly just outed three monsters for me, uh, which was very strong. I'm usually not a fan of ta uh, talents, but in certain situations, obviously it comes up. Taking control and drawing cards is pretty good. Um, and then, of course, fusion duplication uh, was our out to Ash Blossom. If we got Ash going first, we're able to thrust into fusion duplication and then be able to uh, have the ability to play during our opponent's turn, which was very nice every single time. Um, you know, it pretty much just it's again, it's the idea of the win con. You resolve brand fusion nine times out of ten, you win. Uh, call by. And three super poly, so I wanted to have additional cards that allowed me to play the game. Of course, call buys for the ash in, in almost every situation, and then the three super poly is obviously for board breaking. So that was it for the deck, um, uh, the main deck at least. And uh, again, I think it's between forty and forty-two. I don't even remember to be honest with you, but um, like I said, the only changes that I would ideally make is Quem. I think Quem should have most definitely been at two. 
Um, the Sornir and the Bishu Lubellion along with Brandon Lost were okay. I actually don't think I ever set up Brandon Lost at all. Nine times out of ten, uh, you know, my opponents were either interrupting me with Ash Blossom, so I wasn't able to actually set it up during my turn. I'd have to end up thrusting into fusion duplication. Um, and actually, a lot of times, I, I only won one die roll. So actually being able to set up the Lubellion with Brandon Loss was actually very, very slim because I was playing into a board pretty much all day. So yeah, I only won one die roll. So it makes a huge difference, obviously, when you're setting up because obviously the Lubellion has a lot more strength than when you're setting up your board rather than playing into one. Um, so yeah, let's go over the extra deck. So we have our fusion poly targets. We've got uh, Swamp and Garua, uh, Mud Dragon and Garua. Uh, Drago Stapalia, obviously a very important card. Our Guardian Chimera, another very important card. I decided to play Boralode Furious Dragon. I like this card a lot. It does allow me to be able to out spells and traps. Very good against Rescue Ace. Um, it lets you deal with Headquarters, so you stop them from being able to recycle a lot of their cards. Um, this also allows you to trade with a lot of your opponent's effects because they're going to try to get rid of your guys. So you can just sit there on Boralode um, and just keep popping your own dudes. As they're trying to out them, uh, you can also protect your guys with branded opening. I played this before and I liked it a lot before on previous lists, and I wanted to bring it back because I had the space and it it overperformed as usual. Um, let's keep going through this. Um, we have Quateris and Dust Dragon. These were basically our Despia, Dogmatica, Fusion monsters. Uh, we only played these two. No uh, mass grade. Never usually need it, um, but these two are obviously the most optimal. We're swapping into this or into Quem. And then, of course, this allows us to go into everything else. Uh, but it's great against a lot of decks. So these are all of our Fallen of Albas fusions. We've got Iron Dash, Titanic Clad, Rinbrum, uh, Lubellion, two Albion, and two Mirror Jane. Very standard. Uh, I always like playing the Titanic Clad and the Iron Dash because Iron Dash allows you to fuse into anything. So you're basically being able to, you know, fuse into any of your opponent's special summon monsters. Titanic Clad allows you to recycle Quem as well as a Fallen of Albas, which is very important. And then Rimbrum obviously allows you to be able to, um, you know, have that good setup and recycle Fallen to Albaz as well. So, and then everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, I don't think I changed anything in the extra deck. Um, I think the flex spot is the Boralode. So depending on what options you want to have, if you don't want to play Boralode, you can play Masquerade or some of it, something else. Um, but that's it for the extra deck. And then the side deck, I went with three Druus Worm. Obviously, this is for the Unchained matchup, the Mirror Match, uh, Dragon Link. I feel like this is just the better way of doing it. I know we could play Magna Hut because we are able to search some of the dragons in our deck, but I did like having access to just Druid's Worm uh, because again, it trades very well in the Unchained matchup. You want to be able to uh, deal with the, that deal with that matchup and just inherently kind of just trade one for two. Um, so I went with one Eradicator, one D Barrier, one Evenly Match. Um, these were our thrust targets. Uh, the reason why I played these is because. I wanted to be able to have outs in the event that I got Ash Blossom, but was still able to obviously play the game through Cartesia and Quem. I wanted to be able to have something else that I can search going first, and then obviously the even, evenly match for going second, which is very good against Cash um, in other decks like uh, Rescue Ace. So I wanted to have this access to this, but these two are definitely just for the going first option. If I didn't need Fusion Duplication, but I wanted to go Eradicator to blow out purely, we would do that. Um, or if we need a D barrier to deal with a certain matchup like the Mirror, we would do that. So we wanted to make sure just we had options. I mean, Thrust just gives you that versatility. So Then I did play three Dark Hole. Uh, I think Dark Hole is actually pretty nuts right now in the format. Um, the Dark Hole is primarily for Ibli because, again, we do want to make sure that we're not getting completely blown out by Ibli. I don't have the ability to play certain cards in the extra deck to be able to out cards like Ibli. So this was our main way of outing Ibli. It also is good across the board against deck like Unchained uh, because they aren't able to recur Caesar. Um, and Caesar is actually a very problematic card for our deck because it stops special summoning. And obviously that stops Cartesia, Branded Fusion, uh, Branded and White. But yes, uh, Dark Hole, I, I felt like was just utterly insane. It's very good against Rescue Ace as well. Being able to clear their board and forcing them to have to redo their board during your turn just to make some of their spells and traps live is actually really good. Um, you know, same thing again for Unchained. You force them to have to cycle out some of their cards. And if you have like the call by for the Yama, um, you know, you're able to just punish them very, very heavily. Um, this is also very good against cash. You know, if they don't have the Lance, you just out their entire board with Dark Hole. So, I, you know, again, it has a lot of applications, but I like it mainly for Ibli. Uh, you know, having the three Druid Swarm and having the three Dark Hole just means that you have outs to uh, Ibli. And, of course, you know, being able to deal with other degenerate boards or annoying boards. Uh, three Nibiru. This is obviously for the cash and the uh, Unchained matchup. You can also side it in against Rescue Ace when they try to go the Ibli lock. Um, because they do five summons before Gigantic or on Gigantic. So you are able to do this as well. Um, but it, again, primarily for cash in the Unchained matchup. 
And then we went with three Cosmic Cyclone. I didn't want to lose the Floodgates. Um, skill Drain can be a little annoying. I, I have my ways of being able to play around that, but it was primarily for like cards like Anti-Spell. Um, any other cards that we just you know couldn't deal with or didn't want to deal with. It's also very good going first against decks like Purely, Cash, because you're able to just deal with their spell cards. The continuous spell cards like Birth and the uh, the Purely spell, the one they pay five. Um, but yeah, it, it allows you to be able to actually deal with certain things in certain matchups. So it is actually pretty nice to have even going first uh, in some situations. But yeah, that was it for the main side and extra. So I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my formula of the deck. Hope you guys uh, you know can appreciate some of the changes that I made since my last list. You know, if you guys have any suggestions or anything you want to throw down in the comment section below, let me know what you guys, uh, what you know, what transformations you guys would make with the deck. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and as always, you know, definitely uh, go ahead and let's start having these conversations. And uh, you know, hope you guys enjoy the content. I'll catch you guys soon. Uh, hopefully the next time video I do will be a, a fan night video because of course with the new format um, I definitely plan on putting down Brandon and, and want to pick up PK for the next set But of course, we're just waiting for the next set to drop because I want to play with the Horus and the Dia Bolstar cards So, you know, hopefully very soon we'll get back into the PK content now that cash is gone. Thank goodness uh, But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this a like subscribe and appreciate the support